Today in the news, we got some comments from Dr. Sue, some limited overclocks, and some custom cards. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. We've heard a lot of rumors lately about Navi. We've heard things on the low end like the Navi 14, aka the RX 5600 and 5500, and on the high end with Navi 20 or Navi 12, but we're not getting anything from AMD right now. At least we weren't until now. Sort of. In a recent Q&A with AMD CEO, Lisa Su was asked about the high-end market for Navi and the mobile 7 nanometer chips. What we got was a very vague confirmation of what we already knew. She said, and I quote, I would say they are coming. You should expect that our execution on those are on track and we have a rich 7 nanometer portfolio beyond the products that we have currently announced in the upcoming quarters. So basically, Big Navi is on track. If we look at the roadmaps, and we assume that the high-end cards are 7 nanometer Navi and not 7 nanometer plus next gen, then the RX 5800 or 5900 or whatever it's going to be called should make an appearance by the end of this year. Being on track for AMD is a pretty good thing. Navi was teased for the first time back in 2016 with a plan to release in 2018. Every roadmap that came after moved Navi slightly further until it was mid-2018 and then 2019, and now we finally got it in the second half of this year. It's not that big of a delay compared to something like Intel's 10 nanometers, but it's still a delay we had to endure. As for what Lisa had to say about a rich 7 nanometer portfolio beyond the products that have been currently announced, it means that we're probably going to see other Zen 2 based products in the near future. This is likely a reference to Threadripper on 7 nanometer, because besides that, I don't know what else AMD could have in stores for this year, since mobile chips probably won't be coming until next year and the rest of the lineup like Athlons and APUs are one gen behind in architecture. Moving on, let's talk custom RX 5700s. So there's going to be a lot of them, but one thing that hasn't really been talked about is overclocked models. How are they going to perform compared to reference? Well, I spoke to some of my contacts and apparently AMD has made some changes to the BIOS editor used by AIBs. Those changes make pre-overclocked cards harder to achieve. All it seems AIBs will be able to change is the power limit, which allows for slight overclocks on the base and game clocks. But there seems to be a limit on the boost, which means that the 5700 will be stuck at 1725 megahertz max and the 5700 XT will be stuck at 1905. We saw those exact specs on the ASRock Challenger where the base and game clocks were changed, but not the boost clock. For all I know, AMD might be planning on upgrading that editor to allow for more tweaks, but from the information that I received, it's not there yet. We might have to wait a little bit longer to have truly overclocked cards. Speaking of custom cards, you guys really went in on the ASRock Challenger when I brought it up last week. To me, it looked like a cheap but still custom card, but you really did not seem to like it in the comment section. Now we have one from XFX, and I wonder how you're gonna feel about this one. Personally, I was a big fan of XFX's design back into 7970 days, but then they started to take a weird turn with their GPUs. Now this Navi one, I don't know, I don't like it. First of all, it's a two and a half slot design, a little chunky for my taste, but some like it. What I really don't like is how the front looks like the cheapest thing. It's all plastic at the front with some really weird accents in the design. I mean, what the hell is this? It looks like the card is asking us to kill it. But the rear does look a little more premium. It gets a nice backplate with the XFX logo cut out. It's a downdraft cooler like most third parties, but it also feels like the card might choke on its own shroud. This is too closed up for proper airflow in my opinion. What do you guys think? Leave your roasts down below. Next up in Nvidia news, you might have heard that the RTX Super lineup, more specifically the RTX 2060 and 2070 Super, will come in three variants each. This was found by Wizard over at Tech Power Up, and through his findings and the lack of information and response from Nvidia, he is assuming that some of those variants could be flashed or modded to a better GPU. More specifically, the 2060 Super could become a regular 2070, and the 2070 Super could become a 2080. Now, this is pretty much all theoretical 
theoretical and I'll link the full article down in the description if you want to take a look at it, but it's not the first time that Nvidia does something like this. It's usually not an easy thing to do. Back when I was building my first PC, I remember there were some that were able to flash the GTX 465 into a GTX 470. Others were modding a GTX 680 into quadros by just removing some resistors and so on and so forth. Until someone dives deeper into it though, this isn't really interesting to me. Nvidia also has multiple variants of older cards and it could be a simple way of tracking where certain GPUs go. For example, if one variant has more RMAs, then maybe there was an issue with manufacturing. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions, you know where to put them. If you have a subject you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment. Also, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Now I'm about to go see uh, Eber and Dimitri. Um, you might see it on the next video, you might not. I'm, I don't know, but yeah.